Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're actually going to look at state and data flow in Swift UI. We're actually going to break down what it is and why it's important to know these concepts when it comes to working with views and managing data in Swift UI. So let's jump straight into the video. So when you're working with views in Swift UI, sometimes you may need your views to listen to some data in order for it to react. Well, let's think about this with a real world example. Say you have a light bulb and in order to control a light bulb, you need some kind of switch. Imagine this is our data. So depending on the state of our switch, our light bulb reacts to it. So our light bulb could either be turned on or off depending on the state of our switch. For our light bulb, if someone was to turn this on, so you can see here, this arrow represents the action. It now is turned on. So our light bulb reacts depending on the state of our switch, whether it's on or off. And this is the same thing that applies to Swift UI. Our views have a state, and depending on if that state changes, we modify our view. As you can see here, with the light bulb being off, and also by you turning it on. So now we've discussed state in Swift UI, we need to discuss data flow and what the difference is. So state refers to the properties that your object currently has, but data flow refers to the data that your object receives. This is normally held in some kind of source of truth. A source of truth is one place where all your data is held and accessed by different views. It's because we don't want to have different data sources since if we do, our views may reflect incorrect data and show the wrong state. So when we're bringing this all together, what does this actually mean? So when we're bringing this all together, what does this actually mean? Well, in SwiftUI, we use property wrappers and protocols that allow us to use this. We'll go into all of them in more detail in a later example, but let's look at a simple example on the screen. So on the screen here, we've got our example that we were discussing before within our presentation, but we've actually now got it in SwiftUI code. So as you can see, we have this property wrapper called state, and we can actually think about this as our source of truth. Since this is where we're going to hold our data, which we then use to modify the UI state locally. And as you can see, we define this as a Boolean since the light switch can be either on or off. But right now, the default value that we specified is false. You'll notice that we actually have a property here called is on, and we're using our state here within the initializer. So this is where our source of truth gets modified because toggle has a binding which allows you to read updates depending on the state of this view. So if someone was to turn this on, it would actually set our is on property to true. And if someone was to turn this off like it is right now, it would actually set our state to false. So whenever our is on property changes, it actually causes our view to re-invalidate and redraw itself to reflect its new local UI state. So you'll notice here as well, you'll notice here as well that within these two modifiers, we're actually checking to see whether it is on. And if it is on, then we actually change the state of our view here. So in this case, our image view, which is our light bulb. So what we're going to do now is actually run this and actually see what happens. So if I just run this within my SwiftUI preview, and then if I just use a toggle to turn this on, you'll notice now that our light switch actually turns on because it's now true. And when it's true, we specify that we want the symbol variant to be fill. So fill the whole symbol and set the foreground color to yellow. And if we turn this off, you'll see that it now sets the symbol variant to none and the foreground color of it is now set to black. So our view is now reacting to the state changes here. And I actually break this down more in my video, breaking down SwiftUI if you wanna check it out too. Now, this is a simple example, but if we actually go back to our presentation, the concepts that I've shown here is the basis of what you need to understand when you're working with SwiftUI. So let's actually break down a few more points that are important as well. So when you're working with SwiftUI, a view's local UI state is dependent on its source of truth. Also as well, views change and react based on actions. So similar to our example before, whenever we change the is on property, our view reacted and now showed its new local UI state. Also, modeling your data is key. So you need to understand what it is your view actually needs in order for it to update and what data you want to give it so it can represent the correct local UI state. And also as well, you want to ask yourself, does this view really need to react? So sometimes you may not actually need to use a state property at all because the view may not actually need to react to changes. In these cases, then you want to maybe consider using either a let 
or a var instead and just passing data directly into the view. So in future videos, we'll discuss passing data between different views and also tips on this as well. But this is everything from me. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.